welcome to Trashy Trashy, where we take a dumpster dive on this week's Garbage People and a look at all the trashy news stories. My name is Erica, and I'm your host. My name is Cassandra, and I'm your other host. Ooh, feels good to be back to normal. Oh, my goodness. I missed it. Mm-hmm. 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 Classy didn't feel right. It just, it didn't sit well in my soul. Didn't feel like us. Mm-mm. And if you don't know what we're talking about, go back and listen to Friday's bonus episode, Classy Classy. It was an April Fool's joke. (laughs) We we rebranded on social media and Mm -hmm. put out a little bonus episode Mm -hmm. with our classy personas. Yeah, I don't even remember how I did, what voice I did. I can't, I can't even find it at this point, but it, it, uh. It's I'm so trash that I I don't know what a classy person is that I just think that they're just like some cartoon oligarch. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm like, hmm, my servants. (laughs) That's like, what? (laughs) I simply don't walk. I float. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, I'm like uh, a classy person just probably has like manners and just, you know, carries (laughs) themselves well within the world. But I'm like, hmm. They must get, they must have a pinky up at all times. I just, I just, I can't even fathom class, you know? It was so hard to not like say the F word. Like, I think that that's going to be our first episode that doesn't have the little E because I didn't curse because I know it's not classy to curse. I think I still put it on there just in case. <laughs> it's for the best. <laughs> it's for the best. Because it was, oh, yes. <laughs> I just want to <laughs> fucking do this. But it's like, not how they talk. No, no, no. Mm-hmm. Uh, the books would have to be rewritten at that point. <laughs> Some would say the rest is still unwritten. Mm-hmm. Speaking of the the trashiest thing I've seen this week, it's not it's not what I did. It's what I've observed. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw a pretty good April Fool's joke, which was somebody photoshopped Lay's potato chips doing an inst- so so they faked. Lay's potato chips announcing that Joe Biden had died. <gasps> Joe Lay's potato chips had not done this, but then they posted that to Twitter and we're like, WTF Lay's what's up? So then people flooded Lay's potato chips with like WTF Lay's are like, where's Joe Biden? Like, why'd you delete the post Lay's? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it was to be the social media manager for Lay's potato chips that day. What a long day. It was a long day. It was very funny. Very, very funny. I was like, that's a great joke. Because that's like so many, so many prongs. But then the bad thing I saw, the trashiest thing I saw on April Fool's Day was season 12 of Drag Race had a contestant named Sherry Pie, who was arguably going to be a finalist and and was a front runner. She was disqualified for catfishing, Mm. doing fake casting calls, Mm. encouraging people to take steroids for these casting calls, making people do sexually explicit scenes and sending in tapes and things like this, Um, like has admitted to doing such like she, it's not like she's like, no, that wasn't me. Like, it's like, yes, this, these are things I did. I, you know, did these things. People came forward during her season of Drag Race. And so they had to like edit her out a lot of episodes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, who? Which season? Season 12. Oh, I didn't. Is that the one with Jan? Mm, maybe. I don't know. I'll look it up right mm-hmm. now. I didn't, I didn't see that season. Like, I don't know who this person is. Mm-hmm. So she, you know had been you know shamed away and she came back to social media on april fool's day looking like a clown and was like hashtag april fools hashtag mental health hashtag drag i'm ready to come back to social media y'all and it's like we what on today of all days like is this a joke and uh, this is their re-entry into society, I guess. Wow. Yes, it was the season with Jan. With Jan. For what it's yeah. birth. And the only reason I know that is because 
Jan was on the All Star season that I watched mm-hmm. after this, and so I was like, "Oh fuck, I missed a season." But mm-hmm. whatever. Wow, holy shit! Yeah, Jan, Jan, she's the man. Silk, silk with the good milk was my favorite little exchange from that All Star season. But what? Yeah, Sherry Pie came back to social media and was like, "Hashtag mental health." Hashtag April Fools. It's like, mm, that's trashy as hell. That's fucking wild. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why, why are you trash this week? I have a historical trash. Okay. Um, I it, it came to me during what can be described, in my opinion, as an inappropriate conversation at work. But that's here, neither here nor there, and I won't get into it. But long ago, we used to throw a lot of house parties at my cousin's house in Colorado. And one of these house parties, I don't, I don't know who these people were or where they came from. You know, like how house parties get. Mm-hmm. Just people are there and you're like, who are you? Oh, well. Um, but in your early 20s or like late teens, you're like, that's safe. You know, now I'd be like, who the fuck are you? get out no, of my they're, house they're, they're a growing organism and they just it's just a it's like a fungus they just people come in and grow yeah. it's crazy how like in your early 20s you wouldn't even think to ask permission to bring someone to someone's house but now i would never fucking dare to show i ask permission to bring my fiance places yeah. <laughs> like i was invited do i have a plus one to this event yes no, how big or small. Anyways, so there was this random guy and he got very, very drunk. And, w- you know, it was a party. We didn't really hear any sort of commotion per se. But at one point he had fallen asleep on the couch. And as you do at a house party to someone who falls asleep, we started stacking like boxes on his head and he was still <laughs> asleep. It was a whole thing. It was very fun. Anyways, the next morning, you know, and the aftermath, because all that was left was me and my cousins were like, yo what happened to the upstairs bathroom the towel rack is broken the toilet paper holder is broken and the toilet is clogged not like poopy clog just like this shit won't flush and turns out that guy who we hilariously stacked boxes on his head that stranger went into the bathroom fell down (laughs) i guess i don't know managed to break the towel rack, break the toilet paper holder and knock into the toilet a shooter bottle. So like one of those like air airline. Uh, 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 what do they call them? A, a nip, a nip, a nipper. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I, I know them as shooter. You know them as nip. Most people know them as airline bottles, whatever the fuck it is right in what is this bottle to you but <laughs> he knocked one of those in the toilet and tried to flush it oh my god and we yeah. had to get like a plumber to come out and it was like a whole fucking thing so that man was uh forever deemed as the wrecking ball perhaps this is not a story about me being trash because i wasn't the one who did this but i was at that party and that makes me definitely trashy by proximity yeah yeah why are you trash well i in my classy voice i attended a fancy wedding Mm. but uh you know before the wedding while we're all standing around in the venue they were circulating champagne Mm -hmm. and being the little you know trash (laughs) goblin that i am i was like i get my hands on that champagne as soon as possible duh this and is my, before the wedding? Before the wedding. Damn, yeah. that's classy. I want to do that too, but it's expensive to do. It's expensive, yeah. I uh, like by trash goblin, that might be a synonym for alcohol. It's it's a whole thing. But who knows? Who cares? Who knows? Who cares? So I was like, mm, I'm gonna get some of that champagne. So I, you know, get a glass goblet of champagne. They gave Very you a goblet? Fancy. Huh? They gave you a goblet? Like a like a glass, like a nice glass of, okay. of champagne. And so I was like, mmm. And so I had my champagne and then I went to get another and I said, oh, what? So I am talking to the cater waiter and I was like, how do, what do I do with this glass to get another glass? And she's like, you can't put it on my tray because I can't have old and new together, but you can put it down your old glass 
and one of our bussers will come and get it. And so I was like, oh, great. So I took and she goes, or I guess you could, you know, double fist it, like saying how absurd that would be, like in a voice that would be like, I guess you could double fist it. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so I, oh, that's a good idea. Thanks. Oh, great. Oh, okay. And so I took, <laughs> took the second glass and she just was like, oh, like looked at me like, Oh, that I was saying that as like the absurd option. Oh and so God. I took, you know, the second glass of champagne and then walked over and put the other glass down somewhere. And then she, 10 seconds later, walked over, picked it up, <gasps> put it on her tray mm-hmm. and then walked away. And I was like, what? Wh- why couldn't I have just put it on your tray? Like, I don't understand. I wasn't trying to like, uh, it was just like a very odd exchange, but she was saying like, this would be the crazy option for you to double fist it. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. I'll just do that then. All right. And then I was like, oh yeah, I am not meant for formal affairs. You know, see, and I see your logic, mm-hmm. but also I'm not meant for formal affairs either. Mm-hmm. Cause like, you know, those, the waiters, it's tray past. You don't know when you're going to see another person. You have to, if this is carpe diem, seize the day, the, the cater waiters next to you with the champagnes, you might not see them again until after the ceremony. My ass, you better go get that second glass. A hundred, a hundred percent. Like my pioneer ancestors, I'm out there just manifest destining champagne, you know? Yes. I mean, we as weak women are just gatherers, you know, mm-hmm. ultimately so mm-hmm. we're gathering, staking my claim, gathering, putting the nuts away for winter, you know, yes, brain <laughs> hair, bra- weaving things together. Yeah, absolutely. You get two glasses of champagne before the ceremony, you weave a basket. It all makes sense. Mm-hmm. So I was like, mm, this is a very awkward exchange. And then I, I did the thing. Uh, so they had an open bar. Hell yeah. And so the first pass up to the bar, I was like, I'm gonna go big. So I go up <laughs> and I was like, I'm going to pick a lane. Cause they have like three or four bartenders. And I was like, I'm gonna pick a lane and I'm always going to go up to this bartender so that I have a rapport and I have made an impression. <laughs> and so I, I pick my lane and I was like, mm. and so I made sure he saw me put in, you know, like a, like a 20 in the tip jar. God, there is no easy way to nope. make sure that someone sees that you tipped them nope. without being like, hello, do you see? see? No. Yeah. <laughs> Boink. Toodaloo. <laughs> Remember Goodbye, my money. <laughs> like, but it's so important that they see it. Yeah, so I like made like a uh, like a subtle but also flashy production of ooh, look at this manicured hand. I just got just got my nails done. Buy twenty into the tip jar, and I was like, thank you for you know for the drinks and mm, you know I'll be back. <laughs> yeah, we had like a an exchange, but I was like, mm. and so I always went back to that lane. And uh, was you know wanted better service because of my. Your generosity, my generosity. <laughs> it's just human. It's just like God. I'm such a bucket of trash. But then is the uh, way to do it like to slip the twenty, like try to hand them the twenty directly, and then them go. There's a tip jar right there, and go. Oh, 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 oh sorry. <laughs> Here you go. Like well, I, yeah. I I talked to Winston. I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna fold my money into like little squares so I can just you know, palm it to him and shake hands. And he was like, don't, please don't do that. Please don't. Like, he didn't know if I was being serious or not before the wedding. He's like, please, please don't do that. Why would you shake hands with the bartender ever? And like, why would you do it that way? If there's a tip jar, (laughs) that's why he was like, please, please don't do that in front of like, don't do that. (laughs) Hey, I know you guys are all pooling tonight, but this one's for you. (laughs) Yeah, like I like your friends. Have you seen Casino with you know Sharon Stone? No, but Sharon Stone's crazy hot, so I'm disappointed in myself. 
Okay, so casino, right? So there's there's a scene where Sharon Stone folds a hundred dollar bill like into a tiny square and she palms it to like a you know a valet. Mm-hmm. And like it made such an impression on me as a child. Where I was like, <laughs> that's how you get around in this world. As you <laughs> I get it. I get it. <laughs> so I practice. I would practice like as a folding- kid. Yeah, I would like <laughs> fold dollars. And be like, I got a palm. You got to grease the palm. That's how you get. That's how you grease the palms. And like, oh was- my god, have you ever actually really done it? I'm trying to th- not to like an actual per. Like I've done it to like friends where I'm like, mm, this is for you, but not to like an actual not like currency exchange for goods or you know not to a a real person thank god because i think that would be humiliating for both parties like that lady did not have to fucking do that (laughs) just just handed me this but yeah i and then I, i asked for like a round of shots and they were like we aren't permitted to do shots and i was like oh okay yeah that makes sense probably because this is work garbage and they were like but we can make you a very tiny margarita oh so they poured like shots of tequila with the slimmest top of a of a like margarita like above them (laughs) hilarious and i was like "Mm, i like the way you think but again i had to grease the palm to get that done yeah interesting yeah i the fact that you thought to get shots at all is speaks louder than words you know what i'm saying very loud before (laughs) we get into our stories this week we have a quick update yes my king (laughs) the king of class action lawsuits spencer sheehan who has filed more than 400 class action lawsuits we've covered him before he's targeted over 400 companies that have misled consumers with advertising and packages that do not hold up to scrutiny in his and the consumer's opinions had the lawsuit against pop tart saying that they aren't strawberry enough was thrown out by a federal judge boo this is a miscarriage of of justice and i will be writing a letter and when this federal judge comes up for election i don't know if that's how that works Mm, maybe or or it's just one that like the president puts in maybe they're appointed for a lifetime but his I don't know name how judges work but i feel like i should like there was a time in Je- trump's presidency where every like liberal news outlet was like you should know how judges work and then <laughs> yeah. i'm like i i should know how fucking judges work and then i never learned how judges it felt work. very important at one point and right now it doesn't feel as important <laughs> which is like it's stupid because it is important but at the same time it was like i really thought like well, tomorrow we're all going to be dead because Trump is in charge of all the judges. <laughs> so the name, the judge is U.S. District Judge Andrew Carter. Ooh. So if you're in his district, um, it's in New York. It's in New York. You know, write him a letter, uh, vote him out. Anyway, so damn, call to action. Call to action. Judge if he's Andrew a- Carter, he's a judge for the Southern District of New York. And if he's appointed for a lifetime, move. <laughs> That'll okay, teach him. <laughs> Let's get into our first story. Okay. <laughs> That's the only recourse you have is to move. <laughs> According to the New York Post.com, a taxi driver led cops on a two-state chase said that she just didn't feel like stopping. This is the America I want to live in where you have the freedom to just not stop. Really, though? (laughs) No. I love a car chase. I mean, this is bananas. Like, she was started in Alabama and it ended in Tennessee. 
were spikes not thrown in front of her car at one point they just let her like <laughs> they just let her go and she because she didn't feel like stopping like literally why didn't you stop i just didn't feel like stopping today there's nothing in this story about how like and then they found out her trunk was full of meth or anything like that she just like how do you not feel like stopping so bad that you'd rather drive two fucking states and how what is the gas mileage on this taxi <laughs> no like have you seen how expensive gas is right now oh my god <laughs> she's cruising in like some sort of prius taxi happens to catch her on a full full tank and then she sees those sirens and she's like nah yeah not today that's like so petty <laughs> well it's like I-, I know that sometimes if you are if you are driving and you don't know you can call 911 and say hey there is a, a a cop car trying to stop me. Can you verify that this is in fact a cop car and I will pull over? And so they will, they will, you know, dispatch and they will say, yes, in fact, you are being pulled over by a, you know, a real police officer. And you go, okay, thank you. You know, I am, I'm yielding. I'm pulling over. That is a circumstance. Like if, if an unmarked car is pulling you over or something like that is a recourse that you have. Huh? Okay. But if it if it's like a not if it's a marked police car though, oh yeah no she just straight up was like Mm-mm, not today. That's good to know though, Erica. Yeah, that's a hundred percent. If you're just like if you're not sure or if you're in an area where you cannot pull over, you can call nine one one and just say, "Hey, I see the the lights. Can you please let them like let the let them know." I've acknowledged that I will pull over. It's not safe for me to do so in this area or whatever, Mm -hmm. but I, I will, I'm not running or evading. I can't stop in this area, you know, wild. Yeah. But yeah, she, uh, she lost her job as a taxi driver. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. She, she did not get to keep going. So no. No. Um, we got another wild story. Honestly, this makes me believe in the power of love. Okay, well, I think no one's going to be shocked at what I have to say about this. So, <laughs> according to ukstyle.yahoo.com, holiday tattoo madness. I'm searching for the stranger whose name is tattooed on my bottom. A mom is trying to track down a man whose name she spontaneously had tattooed on her bottom during a girl's trip abroad. So she was with four friends in Spain and then she they ran into like a bachelor party, a bunch of dudes dressed like babies who were all getting tattoos. And then they were like, hey, I'll do it too. And basically it's how I see it going down. <laughs> yes. So she, ta- she tattooed the name Daniel Ford, F-O-R-D-E, on her left cheek and paid 30 euro for the tattoo she didn't pay for it daniel did so daniel paid for it i'm so yeah, sorry so daniel paid for it yeah. they struck up a conversation and the and the guy was like i'll get your or get my name tattooed on you i'll pay for it and then she was like okay uh, so then he returned to cardiff the next day and she has never seen him since and wants to get back in touch <laughs> so she's she's looking for him on facebook and shit okay this is what i'm saying is this not a time traveler <laughs> come on yeah you can't find him right right is it perhaps because he was time traveling and by you having this tattoo on your ass you prevented world war five and you don't even know it like honestly yeah how is that how you can't tell me that's not what happened <laughs> this is this is honestly to me very oh my god uh very nicholas cage very the declaration of independence very what the fuck movie am i thinking of oh oh no it, duh it's the movie oh my god everyone what's wrong with us everyone's screaming phone, like, it's the one where nicholas cage steals the it, it, don't look it up i we cannot google it it's the one where he steals the oh, okay national have- treasure oh this is honestly that that feels like close to having an orgasm when you yes when you're able to get there you don't you don't google it 
Yeah. 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 Cause it, it used to, you know, 20 years ago, we used to literally have to remember we didn't have the option to really look at it anyway. More than um, 20 years ago, Erica. Yeah, yeah more than oh. been out for a long time. Well, oh, that hurts. Um, like it this hurts to me. Looking back on when you were four, when there was <laughs> when there was no computers. Damn it! But like, I miss but, it. Ooh. Yeah. Or or very um the Da Vinci Code where she's like, I've got this name tattooed on my rump, and then somebody's gonna come along and be like. Well, if you look at the letters and rearrange them, it's actually a clue. And then like, she's going to find out who Jesus's parents were, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like the real ones, the real ones. Yeah. This is very clue to me, you know? Yeah. So she's trying to reach out and find him. I think that, you know, there's the Nicholas Sparks version of this where they get back in contact and fall in love, but it's very possible if this guy wasn't a time traveler that he was just like some drunk dude who like woke up the next morning and was like we gotta get the fuck out of here i i let some girl tattoo my name on her ass and i really don't want to deal with this yeah. uh, me thinks daniel ford not his real name oh but no if you really you have the opportunity to get someone to get a fake name tattooed on you and you're not gonna and you're just gonna go with daniel ford and not a silly name like charlie mcdennis like, what's charlie mcdennis i don't know just like, i'm just, uh, Mc, mcgillicuddy yeah no oh, i all I over nipple <laughs> i just i don't i don't feel like dan she's never gonna find daniel ford because daniel ford does not exist wow a need yeah. more head. Oh God! I'm sorry, I just found one. I found that on Google. I obviously did not come up with that. Oh my God! Um, speaking of like, you know, vacation, just got to get away. Holiday. Uh-huh. Let's get into our next story from NPR.org. Yeah, come at us that we don't get some good news. That's NPR, baby. It's a dot org. Yeah, no big deal. Did you donate? You think you're better than me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I got a tote bag one year for donating. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah sweet. K- KCRW. You know, I'm a member. You know, that's the most NPR shit of like, thank you for your donation. Here's a tote, you know, yeah. to use at the grocery store because you shouldn't be using bags. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody knows you donated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Pink Floyd. A flamingo on the lamb from the Kansas Zoo since 2005 is seen again in Texas. So a flamingo that flew away from the Kansas Zoo nearly 17 years ago and has been on the run ever since just got he they saw him in Texas. They didn't catch him, but they saw him. So <laughs> he was spotted in Cox Bay in Port Lavaca, 120 miles southwest of Houston. So there was like him and a bunch of other flamingos that arrived at the zoo from Tanzania and it's unethical to amputate part of the bird's wings that let them fly and when they're already like adults and so instead they just kind of clipped the flamingos feathers but there was a in 2005 they they let their feathers get too long and needed to be clipped again and two of them escaped one of them being pink floyd and so flamingos are naturally white but they get their coloring from eating shrimp and other crustaceans that give them the pink coloring so pink floyd is actually a white bird right now because of the diet that they've been sustaining themselves on wow thank you for not gendering pink floyd yeah i i don't know i don't know pink floyd you know I don't know if Pink Floyd's discovered about themselves on the lamb. (laughs) So he's probably about 27 years old and flamingos can live until about age 30. So Pink Floyd's going to die soon. But (laughs) well, everyone was wondering it. He said, when's this bird going to (laughs) die? That was my first thought. I was like 17 years ago and this bitch is still alive. How long do flamingos live? Okay. So it started out in Kansas city and it's made its way down to te- at some point this bird was in oklahoma and he survived it and he survived it like 
Like there was some redneck who was just like, hell, Martha, get, you know, feed the birds some sl-. like I just I like to think about his life in Oklahoma for a little bit where he was just like living off slops in someone's backyard. It was just like, well, it's a nice life, but I gotta get down to the ocean again, you know. <laughs> oh you should write a book about it i know i kind of this is inspiring me yeah Yeah. Yeah. i felt inspired by your da vinci code-esque daniel ford tattoo so we should both write books and then we don't have to do this anymore this free fucking pot i'm just kidding (laughs) i'm just kidding (laughs) and then you'll catch me i'll you'll i'll be on the lay i'm like pink floyd you'll never fucking see me again yeah yeah we'll be rich Oh my goodness. So books. Oh, this is interesting. Flamingos were long considered an invasive species in the U S though. There is some question about whether the bright pink birds are actually native to South Florida. We will not get into that other article, but you should do some research. Yeah. Go Mm -hmm. learn something about flamingos. Mm -hmm. I think earned it. They should release more flamingos into the wild because I would love to just walk out (laughs) In Koreatown and just see a flock of flamingos. I love you mm-hmm. and think you're wrong because if, I have a feeling there's probably a reason that they're not releasing flamingos into the wild. Mm-hmm. And as someone who is tormented on the daily basis by the parrots, <laughs> the native valley. parrots of the valley, <laughs> um, I don't want those stinky long leg bitches with their weird necks uh, just, you know, picking through the garbage. All right. All right. All right. But no remember, fl- I started that with, I love you. Uh-huh. uh-huh. No, no flamingos in, in the concrete jungle. I get it. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of, I love you, but <laughs> let's get into our next story from the New York post.com. Best man steals bride from groom after confessing love during his wedding speech. This headline is misleading. A little bit, a little bit. And it's also my plan for Cassandra during her own wedding. So, (laughs) Oh boy. Mm. So here's what happened is this woman and this woman met a guy in high school and they were friends and she had a boyfriend and I guess she married her high school sweetheart according to this uh, story but the three of them were like the best of friends like just this little threesome we love life these two are dating and then this guy yeah okay so Desiree White 32 ultimately divorced her husband to marry her lifelong friend and the best man at her wedding Bryant after he confessed his undying love for her while toasting her nuptials to his then best friend yeah so he's the best man he goes first moment i saw desiree i loved her i fell in love with her i knew she had to be mine i thought she was the most beautiful person i've ever seen in my life and like gives that speech and everyone's like "Uh, what then the wedding goes on and there's like a moment where like the the maid of honor and the hut and the groom danced and the bride and the best man dance which like if i was at that wedding oh I would be watching that dance like crazy and just so like toxic and gossiping. It would have been insane. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, so it ended after like, uh, you know, he said basically, um, you know, I, she's the best person I've ever met. I I love you both. Basically. He's like, you know, but you know, congrats, congrats. (laughs) And then everyone was like, what the fuck did we just hear? And so that was kind of, uh, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, God. Yeah. So they're dancing and she's like, what was that? And he was like, nothing like (laughs) it's cool. And then, you know, like everything kept happening. Like they were married for like, what, a year? And then all her, all of a sudden her, she said that her husband was just turning into like, not the guy that she thought he was Mm -hmm. being a, a husband didn't suit him. And, uh, so they got divorced and, you know, this guy, the best friend was still a friend during the divorce and helping her and stuff. And then one day it just, it just happened. Mm-hmm. It just happened. I, I mean, nothing just happens. 
you know? Right. Like, how do you come back from that? Like if someone, first of all, first of all, if you're going to profess your love, do it before the wedding, because it's kind of like, I mean, it's a dick move to do like the day of the wedding regardless, Mm -hmm. but like to do it after like the papers have already been signed. It's kind of like, well, you're too fucking late, like truly too late. Yeah. And and the bridesmaids have already folded their tips into like little tiny, you know, squares so that they can shake, you know, that's too late, you know, (laughs) everyone's moved on. It's over, you know? So I don't like that element, but it's like, how do you come back from that? Like, how do you, did the bride and the groom on like the way to the honeymoon go, what was up with Bryant's speech? Like, Mm -hmm. are you guys like, I don't, I don't see how this didn't affect her year-long marriage oh from the day one yeah there was a seed planted that made him yeah Uh, i'm not saying yeah obviously something was within the husband like that was already going to happen but like that that was watered you know like the seed had been planted and then that was just watered by this speech How, how do you become i hate to defend a man ever but like how do you become a good husband to someone when your best friend who was like introduced to you by her was turns out like super in love with her your wife the whole time and like she allegedly didn't know it's like that's just like such a rough start to a wedding or to a marriage like you're losing your best friend like i I don't know i have i have so many questions but anyway so they're together now and they've been married since 2012 and they have like four kids and they're super happy so like i guess that's cool but like this was not a victimless uh love story i'll tell you what yeah yeah it yeah it's like we're happy for them now but it's like mm, mm, something in the milk ain't clean you know yeah totally that's such a wild expression and i've heard you say it before and i love you for it yeah i don't know it's just something you know little something in the back of the brain you know <laughs> let's get into our next story which i just love because it just makes me feel like something i would have done in my childhood <laughs> from wkbn.com robber in warren ohio asked victim to pinky promise not to report it Sounds legit. What kind of monster breaks a pinky promise? A reported robbery victim told police that the robber made him pinky promise that he wouldn't call authorities after stealing $80 from him and Warren. It was around 1030 p.m. and uh, the guy was walking along the road when he was approached by a man wearing a ski mask. And then the man asked the guy in the ski mask was like, are you a drug dealer? And then the victim was like, nah. And he was like, sweet, here's a knife. I'm giving you all your money. Mm -hmm. What would have happened if he was like, yeah, I'm a drug dealer. I am curious. Like, what's up with the drug dealers in Warren, Ohio? Like, are they like crazy scary? Because, I mean, that is kind of like, hey, are you are you a black belt in any sort of martial art? Okay, cool. I'm going to rob you or like. (laughs) You know, do you actively carry a firearm? Okay, mm-hmm. great, wonderful. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. gonna rob you. But oh. it's like if they say yes, be like, all right, carry on. I will continue on my ski mask wearing duties at 10 40 p.m. Uh <laughs> and see you later. But then the victim was made to pinky promise that he wouldn't call the cops. And the victim broke that promise. That like the order of pinky promise has been handed down from man. For thousands upon thousands of years, the Egyptians had pinky promises. The fucking cavemen had pinky promises. You can't break a pinky promise. It goes against the order of man. What's next? Cannibalism? I say so. But, you know, here's the thing. Was the pinky promise done correctly? Because if you did a pinky promise, like, did they both kiss their thumbs also? Or touch them together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then touch them together. Or like, did the victim have his, his other hand behind his back with his fingers crossed? Because these are legal ways to break a pinky promise. Yeah. You're, you know what? You're right. Uh, As pinky promise lawyers, you know, we, we are jurist doctorates in pinky promise law. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've got a lot of questions that this story 
does not get into and I need answers. So I want answers. It's like I went to Harvard for nothing, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, So the robber rode off on a bicycle, Mm -hmm. obviously, but the police didn't catch him, which was fucking, you know, so like here's we have yet another time traveler on this episode of Trashy Trashy. I mean, the officers check the area near the pit stop gas station for a man riding a bicycle, but were unable to find anyone. It feels like they were like, looked left, looked right. And we're like, anybody riding a bike? No, I'm gonna go home. <laughs> Sorry about your bad luck, guy. You're out 80 bucks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sounds like that was uh, what you would have made in tips that a night at the Applebee's. Oh, my God. Speaking of that, feeling good in the neighborhood, according to the New York Post, Applebee's franchise exec is slammed for allegedly suggesting employee pay cuts. How could you possibly pay an Applebee's employee less? I mean, here's the thing. As food gets scarce, have we considered eating the rich? Interesting. Yeah, just a pitch I've been thinking about. Mm-hmm. Is food scarce? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> For you. Supply chain. I don't know. I'm not smart. No, no, Erica, please. Yeah. Yeah. You're a pinky lawyer. I'm a pinky promise lawyer. <laughs> An Applebee's franchise executive is under fire for allegedly suggesting in a leaked email that worsening economic conditions could force desperate restaurant workers into longer shifts at lower wages. As inflation continues to climb and gas prices continue to go up, that means more hours employees will need to work to maintain their current level of living. That's what he said. A March 6th email was allegedly sent by Wayne Pankratz, an executive with American Franchise Capital. I mean, the, no disrespect to anyone who's named Wayne, but like Mm-mm. that is a billionaire villain name almost mm-hmm. always. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So in the email, he gleefully shares that stimulus checks have run out, mom and pop shops are struggling to offer competitive wages, driving more potential employees into the hiring pool. We more people coming to Applebee's to serve a surf and turf previously frozen. So he says the favorable labor market gives his company the chance to hire employees at a lower wage. Said the businesses were hiring team members at 18 to 20 dollars an hour. They're not going to be able to afford this anymore. So the labor market is about to turn into our favor. What can you do? Mm-hmm. He says, most of our employees' base and potential employee base live paycheck to paycheck. Any increase in gas cuts into their disposable income. Fucking God. If you hold these views, just don't put them in an email, I guess. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Don't put this shit in writing. There should be nothing exciting about the prospect of paying someone less money. If it's your reality that you have to pay someone less, then that's one thing. But like to be like stoked because I mean, maybe it means that you get more money. It's I don't know. Like, I just don't totally get that. Like, I understand, you know, not wanting to pay people more than what their position is. I don't know. Like, I can see a lot of like the capitalist ways, but Or like thinking that someone's wanting too much money, but to be excited to pay people less than like what they would deserve, Mm -hmm. that's fucked up. Oh yeah, he he goes on to say, besides hiring employees at a lower wage to decrease our labor when able, make sure to have the pulse on the morale of your employees. Your employees that live paycheck to check are impacted more than the people reading this email. So he's aware of this. Be conscious of that. Many will need to work more hours or get a second job. Do things to make sure you are the employer of choice. Get schedules completed early so they can plan their other jobs around yours. More importantly, have a culture and environment that will attract people. I mean, that is like the pizza party logic of everything. Or instead of bonuses this year, we're going to give everyone swag. (laughs) Mm. <laughs> like, like that's what that is like the, the bile in my throat is just like 
rising. Yeah. Like, look, people are going to have to work more hours to get a second job. Absolutely. So, you know, make sure that this is their favorite shitty job. Yeah. Yeah. So a spokesperson for the company told the Kansas City Star that Pankratz does not have the power to influence company hiring policy. Mm. Oh, good. He's just some guy. (laughs) Yeah. He's just some guy with ideas idiot you know who's not a fucking idiot who ashley tisdale do you know what you're right she's from insider.com ashley tisdale says that she made her husband buy 400 books for empty bookshelves before a video shoot and before you think oh my god how vain and fake you know to like just randomly buy a bunch of books so that it looks good well yeah it, that's like it, she's an architectural architectural digest i respect that she's admitting it a hundred percent because other people do shit all the time to stage their houses and they just act like oh it just looks like this all the time if you think for one second that every episode of mam tv cribs that you've seen is someone's actual fucking house Mm -mm. you are severely mistaken people Uh, will rent houses for that they'll mm -hmm. buy furniture just for that no yeah the only one i would believe is mariah carey I do think that she actually lives like that. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Like, Pimp My Ride, all of those cars were, like, practically uninsurable (laughs) and undrivable after that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they were not road drivable. You know? Yeah. A champagne dispenser in the front seat. It's like, you can't get insurance on a car. Like, (laughs) it's all fake. I'm sorry to tell you. So the fact that she's making a joke about it. Okay, Ashley Tisdale, I like you. And she's stimulating the economy. She's like, go to a local bookstore and buy 400 books. I mean, that probably kept that bookstore open for two more months. (laughs) He's like, honey, we should be collecting books over time and putting them in our shelves. And she was like, no, 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 no. Not when AD comes. (laughs) So she was pregnant at the peak of the pandemic and like they just moved into a new house. And so she furnished the home. She's got like a nice design eye and her dad is like a contractor. So she's kind of building a little bit of a name for herself as a, um, you know, design influencer. Mm -hmm. And I'm here for it. Mm -hmm. I just, yeah, I just love her, her honesty. (laughs) Her, her whole architecture digest is like 16 minutes long, but if you watch It's about three, three and a half minutes into the clip when she gets to the bookshelves and reveals the, here's the book. (laughs) They're all brand new. (laughs) Not, not a, not a lick of words have been read off these, not a fingerprint in these books. (laughs) I basically have a bookstore in my home. (laughs) All these books going right back. (laughs) Yeah. Cameras down. Every book's going back on the truck. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so I, are you ready oh i'm ready it's time for the dumpster fire of the week oh my god so it, it's a nice segue from someone being very honest I think although this is a sad story in my opinion from hopdla.com Sunset Beer Company, a staple of the Los Angeles beer scene and one of the first craft beer bars in the area, announced their closure on Thursday afternoon after being open on Sunset Boulevard since 2011. Sunset Beer was one of the first places in the area to dedicate itself fully to craft beer, even as Echo Park quickly became a small bastion of craft beer bars like Mohawk Bin, Sage Brewery, and the Semi-Tropic, all are within walking distance. Mm. Sunset Beer was well known for their staff's knowledge and wide selection of bottles and draft beers. So, like, this is one of my favorite places, yeah. truly. Mm-hmm. I've, if you ever listen to Nooner podcast, you know that I talk about Sunset Beer a lot and that actually Marty's like good friends with the owner and uh, Marty had his 50th birthday there actually two or three years ago before the pandemic. But this is like devastating. It was like when I lived in Echo Park, this was my favorite fucking place. When people came to visit me, I'm like, you got to, we got to go to Sunset Beer because it was basically like a liquor store vibe of like fridges full of beer that you could just buy a beer and like leave Mm -hmm. Or you could buy a beer and and then walk over to the other side of the restaurant or uh, the other side of the bar and you can drink it there. And they weren't, I mean, they were charging you what the can was worth, 
So you'd be like, oh, cool. I just like it was like a place where you could go get a beer for like four bucks in L.A. Mm -hmm. So they're fucking closing and it has nothing to do with the pandemic. Right. Right. The, the reason why we're getting into this, it's, it's very sad. But the reason why is because the rent is increasing by the new building owner. So in an Instagram post that they announced on Thursday, the new owners of the building Red Car LTD slash industry partners who acquired the property in 2018 showed no interest in negotiating leases, evidence the beer company or the beer bar says, by three of the businesses in the strip mall walking away, leaving the building mostly vacant. Yeah, there was like that strip malls had a lot of different like things in it. And like, I guess maybe right before the pandemic, there was like, a kind of comic booky shop, a new bar and sunset beer. And then I think like a dentist's office or a laundry, like something else. And this new play, this new red car industry partners who bought the build. Yeah. They bought it in 2018. They jacked the rent up so high that these businesses were leaving and they didn't do anything about it. Like they, this company has so much money that they can lose that rent knowing in their long-term goal of getting all those businesses out and converting this strip mall into something fucking awful. So red car industry or red car is a commercial real estate investment company started by a former Blackstone executive in 2018 that began with just under 500 million in funds. And essentially, so according to their own website, they're an urban commercial real estate in Los Angeles They say they acquire underperforming properties and high growth urban neighborhoods and add value through specialized redevelopment and deep repositioning. Jim Jacobson is the chairman and CEO of Red Car LTD. The address of Sunset Beer, 1498 Sunset Boulevard, is listed as a coming soon on their website. Yeah, they're going to turn this shit into some fucking condos that no one can afford or, you know, Chipotle. Yeah, like Chipotle, Starbucks kind of. And this is happening all over Echo Park. Like it's already happened to there was this like old laundromat that had like a subway in it for like it was just kind of like a dingy place. But then it got bought up and now it's like a habit burger and a Chipotle Mm -hmm. and like you know, all these things. So it's like, that's fine, I guess, for certain areas like that call for that, but to bulldoze over the character and like these businesses that have been there for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years in this neighborhood that like even 30 years ago, nobody would even step foot in because it was considered so dangerous and like low income and Let's just build a freeway through here and fuck everyone. This is like a new way of fuck everyone because I'm not going to say that I wasn't like a, a, a participant, I suppose, in the gentrification of Echo Park because I did live there and mm-hmm. I wasn't one of the original like residents there, you know, but like right. it's now gotten to a point where I don't even know who, like, who are you looking for? Who do you want to live there? Yeah, it's uh, same. It's the the Abbott Kinneyification of Echo Park. You yes. know, there's there's definitely waves of gentrification, and I too, uh, you know, I'm a gentrifier. I lived in Echo Park for quite some time, and you know, I'm a transplant and lived there. But I feel like I, you know, contributed to the neighborhood. Yeah. So yeah, red uh, red car was going to raise the rent four times what they were orig- originally paying. And so if you go to urbanize.city slash LA, Red Car has bought up properties in Chinatown, Culver City, West Adams, Santa Monica, wow. downtown Echo Park. They're buying up a lot of property and they are part of a taking advantage of a a government program that is allowing people to take advantage of like re-urbanized zones and essentially what they think is uh, it's just, it's a it's a bad deal we're letting these people come in and essentially screw over communities and like jim jacobson is a bad capitalist yeah not good not good, not good. 
I mean, I'm, I'm all for like, you know, having neighborhoods like thrive and be profitable and be a place where it's safe and where there's good businesses and all these kinds of things. But there's just, there's so many bad intentions and all, it's all about money with this stuff. And this is just kind of, you know, like there's over 40,000 people who are homeless in Los Angeles and Mm -hmm. we keep building these big condo high rises for that are over a million dollars per con like no one can afford to fucking live here anymore this this whole thing is like driving people out i really like i but i guess i think this is about san francisco too i'm like who can actually afford to be there and there are people so what do i know it's just commercial real estate with deep pockets yeah i mean to start a company with half a billion in in like to be able to buy up property and then that property gains value and to be able to flip it. And then it's just, yeah, man, we're, we're seeing it's, it's, you know, the land run again. What the land run. What is that? Is this a short story? No. Uh, it, oh, the land run is when Oklahoma, <laughs> basically Oklahoma was an event. Basically anytime there was land in Oklahoma, it was restricted right? And it was the government would say, okay, everybody meet up at, at, at noon on, on this day, and it would be open on a first come, first serve, or by bid basis. And But in Oklahoma, a lot of times they would, they would take over uh, like Indian territory, and they would literally say like at noon, take off and like whatever plot of land you can get that will become your, and it was a literal land run, like, whoa, like a land rush, like where you would like sprint out on your horse or your wagon and be like, this is our plot. And this is our territory. Like, this is the one we're going to take. And like, that was a lot of land in, in, in America was like settled through land runs. It's just crazy. So this is just like <laughs> capitalist land runs. The only time that those rules are appropriate is on the first episode of the real world where everyone goes and finds their room. Otherwise, <laughs> or, or real housewives trip. Yeah, hundred yes. percent. Otherwise, no, no. So, anyways, this is very funny. It's a bummer, and uh, it's very, very, very yeah. garbage. Yeah. What are you What are you hoarding this week? I'm hoarding um, gel manicures. <laughs> yes. Mm. as we complain about the privileges of the rich um <laughs> i okay we uh, a a 30 to 60 dollar gel manicure does not put us in the one percent you fair. know you're absolutely right i just tell you what it just got it's i used to get acrylics for years and now i can't really do it because it's hard to type and it ruins your nails but i've been getting gel manicures now for like i don't know like the past four or five months and it's a price to pay. It's like, I have to budget for it because it is, you know, like Erica said, 40 to $60 every like three ish weeks. I push it kind of far, but it just fucking makes me feel good about myself. And I have always been the type of person where if I, if my nails looked good, which is why I got acrylics for so long, if my nails looked good, then it kind of didn't matter what the rest of me looked like. It's kind of the same logic of like when you get the eyelash extensions, it's like there's, you have one thing that's like, right. Mm -hmm. Then you can get away with a lot being wrong. So, Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's hard. Like I'm budgeting for a wedding and for fucking survival in Los Angeles. And Mm -hmm. it's, it'll be easy to kind of slash these things, you know, like, but then I think about what, what it truly does to me. And like my confidence for three weeks. And I'm like, no, I have to, yeah, I have to get, I have to make room in the budget for the fucking manicures. Yeah. So I love them. Go get yourself a gel manicure if you want. Highly recommend it. Um, what are you hoarding? I'm hoarding a show on HBO Max called Starstruck. Okay. It is very cute little show. So the premise is a Kiwi, like a New Zealand girl, a transplant in London, meets a guy you know new year's eve they they hook up come to find out he's a very famous movie star wow and so you're like oh that's cute and she's just like you know it's like a one night sandy type thing but then he's again like 
a very famous movie star and she's like you're you're famous and he's a grown like he's lovely like he's a grown-up he's funny he's charming he's nice and she's kind of a mess and it's kind of pushing him away and he's kind of pulling her in and they it's just it's funny it's charming and it's just her navigating life and adulthood and him it's just like this cute little will they won't they love story and it's really funny and charming and it, it's great it's really cute it, it's called love struck it's on hbo max there's two seasons starstruck out. starstruck yeah shit starstruck uh, there's two seasons it's really really well done starstruck on hbo max not to be confused with the 2010 disney channel original movie starstruck no not the 2010 disney original movie i just i don't want people to get confused that's all yeah yeah uh, this this one has a lot of a lot more fucking in it i'm sure yeah well i don't know i don't know disney in 2010 was was <laughs> out there you know there might be some a lot of fucking in that <laughs> what are you throwing away i can't really think of much that was like i felt passionate enough to throw away but it's kind of come to me while we're at the podcast and i i'm I'm putting myself out there and to be attacked, but like people who set their clocks actively, like seven to eight minutes fast. Mm -hmm. Fuck you, man. Mm -hmm. Like, Oh, you won't want to be late. Like, no, we never want to be late. I get, I get that logic, I guess. But at the end of the day, all your clocks are fucking wrong and they're giving me anxiety. (laughs) So what about, four minutes no fucking get your clock right if you don't want to be late do other things but this clock everywhere that are wrong that affects everyone who enters your home (laughs) okay okay what about what about a car no (laughs) are you crazy four minutes fast in the car no what no 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 look your phone is always going to be on time you're if you have an apple watch that shit's going to always be on time so you just look like a fucking crazy person if your car your oven your alarm clock all this shit if it's just like fast like what the fuck is your problem not you although it sounds like you do it i'm just i'm just asking questions (laughs) i I, look i know a lot of people do this very specific questions (laughs) Just if you're trying to find the line, there ain't one. I don't like when people do this. I find it. I just, I don't know. It's like giving me anxiety. Like Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking at a clock right now and it's not right. And I'm like, oh shit. Like I had to hurry up. And then I'm like, no, that clock is 10 minutes fast. Mm -hmm. Cassandra hates time travelers. I don't hate time travelers. (laughs) I just believe in them. And honestly, this kind of shit with the clocks being wrong is something that is life or death if we have if we come into encounter with the time traveler. Because they're gonna be like, oh, I already missed my deadline. Oh no, yeah, you're right. Hello. We need to make sure that if a time traveler comes among us, that they can get what they need to do done. And when you set your clocks wrong, imagine that you have a car with a four-minute fast time because you do it because you don't like to be late or whatever and then a time traveler needs to like steal your car in order to like do something so that like the world doesn't explode Mm -hmm. and then they're in your car and then the time is wrong like are you kidding me are you was it worth it (laughs) was it worth it always being on time (laughs) just get ready earlier anyways i've Mm -hmm. gone on a tangent i Mm -hmm. thought that this was going to be small and it's obviously Mm. so much bigger to me what are you throwing out yeah i um i'm throwing out you know i in the pandemic i have upticked my usage of delivery Mm -hmm. and um i don't i'm throwing out delivery drivers and people (laughs) assuming i am a family of four and bringing (laughs) The silverware and cutlery for a family of four when I'm ordering my dinner for one. <laughs> I have like a junk drawer full of, you know, the, the plastic 
containers, you know, the silverware that you get from these places. And it's like, okay, nope, just, just the one person. I just want a bite of this and a dab of that, but I get, it looks like a lot of food, but it's, it's embarrassing. And I, I don't know how to put a note in. This is just for one person or no silverware, please. You know, it's just, uh, but yeah, it's wasteful. So we just have a drawer of, you know, disposable plastic silverware piling up and it's, um, I'm throwing it out in general. It's so funny because it's like, I understand the logic of the restaurant, you know, because you don't want to give them not enough silverware and then they call you and they go, wee, you know, mm-hmm. but I had to eat with my hands. Yeah. I was like, no, you don't have silverware at home. Like, okay, that's fair. But I also understand your struggle because there have been times where like, I'll get the food and then I'll be like, I'll see three sets of silverware and I go, oh, copy that. I'm about to eat three people's worth of food. Fuck. Yeah. It's like, yeah. it's like a serving size on a nutrition label, like, but it's too late. I already did it. Yeah. It's like note, note taken, note <laughs> taken. Like, yeah. oh fuck. I got four yeah. fortune cookies. Yeah. Boo. <laughs> I don't Boo. need that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, where where can the people find you okay so here's what happened so mm-hmm. i got back on instagram mm-hmm. and i went and i made myself private and i deleted a lot of followers so if i deleted you because you're a listener and we do not know each other personally just add me back and just let me know you're a listener because I, it's hard when you're fran- like i deleted over 400 followers so i know that i may have accidentally deleted listeners i know that but I don't know if you're a listener or you're like a bot or you're like one of the weird like men that requests me on Facebook all the time. What's up with that? Why do men, random middle-aged men request me on Facebook? How do they yes. fucking even find me? How do they find me? Why are they wearing sunglasses in their profile pictures? Yeah. What the hell are middle-aged white men doing on Facebook? They're just sitting there scrolling around looking at like women mm-hmm. and just uh, anyways, whatever. The point is, add me back, request to follow me if you want. You don't even have to. It's, I mean, you don't have to, but I don't know. It's not personal. It's just, yeah. it's not personal. If I deleted you as a follower, I am sorry. Please request me back. I just, I, I got on a tangent. I got on a roll. And then I realized when it was too late that perhaps I had done some damage. So Hashtag mental health. Hashtag uh, <laughs> Instagram recovery. So yeah. at Cass Cardenas is my Instagram handle. That bitch is private. Add me back. Let me know. I listen to Trashy. I mean no harm. And I'll let you back. Fair enough. Yeah. You can also find me on the Nooner podcast. I haven't been in a few weeks, but you know, you can, you can definitely find me there. I'm, I'm on quite a few episodes. And then... Uh, Twitter at Cass Cardenas. I rarely post. Where do they find you? You can find me at Iconic Erica Curry. You can also find me at We Are JWC, which is the Jacked Wrestling Comedy Show, which by the time you're listening to this will have taken place on Saturday, April 2nd, and there will be another one coming in May. And that is a comedy wrestling variety show with wrestlers and comedians. And it is a damn good time at the Pack Theater in Los Angeles. But you can follow us along for all the fun antics and the good times. And yeah, at Iconic Erica Curry is is probably the best spot. And it's a great place. You can find this podcast at Trashy Trashy Pod on Instagram and on Twitter at our website, www.trashytrashypodcast.com or on our Gmail at trashytrashypodcast at gmail.com. Send us a listener story. Tell us why you're trash. You can also submit stories for us to read on the pod. We love it when you do. And it always helps us climb in the charts. If you could leave us a five-star review on the Spotify or Apple iTunes chart, it helps other people find the podcast that you are listening to right now. Be a part of something bigger. Yes. <laughs> hey, Cass. What's going on, girl? Stay garbage. You stay garbage, girl. I will. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hey, hey.